All right, we are demonstrating the executive function performance test. It's a neuropsychological test to gather information about specific aspects of cognition, such as memory, attention, and planning. Um, it examines executive functioning in the context of performing a task or a goal-directed activity. Its purpose is to determine which executive functions are impaired, determine an individual's capacity for independent functioning, and determine the amount of assistance necessary for task completion. So unlike other IADL's assessment, it isn't it's examining what the individual cannot do, but it's identifying how much assistance they need to carry out the task. Okay, and there are no inclusion or exclusion populations for this assessment, and um, it requires strict adherence to the testing protocol, and no uh, modifications can be made for the instructions. So they have a specific uh, script that you need to stick to, um, any deviation from the standard testing protocol will uh, decrease uh, validity and there are pre-test questions to help establish baseline. Alright, so before beginning any of the tasks, we want to ask the pre-test questions um, and we also use this response card for the person. It is labeled zero is by yourself, one is with guidance, two is with assistance, and three is I will not be able to do, complete this task. Um, so do you cook? Yes. Do you use the stove to cook your meals? Yes. Have you recently made oatmeal on the stove? Yes. Will you be able to make oatmeal uh, okay. zero, one, two, or three? One with guidance. Do you use the phone on a regular basis? Yes. How many times a week do you use the phone? About four times. What's the correct number you call in an emergency? 911. Will you be able to make a phone call zero, one, two, or three? Uh, zero by myself. Do you take medication? Yes. Can you tell me where you keep your medications? Uh, in the cabinet, my bathroom. When do you take your medicine? Uh, in the morning before I leave for school. Will you be able to take the medication zero, one, two, or three? Uh, zero by myself. Do you pay your bills? Yes. Does someone help you with the bills? Yes. Have you ever used a checkbook? Yes. Do you know how to use a checkbook? Yes. Alright, and if they've never used a checkbook before, you would just skip this test um, because you wouldn't be cueing them based on their uh, lack of processing, you'd be cueing a lack of knowledge. Um, will you be able to pay the bills zero, one, two, or three? Um, two with assistance. All right, so we're going to start off with the cooking task. Um, it requires a pan uh, with a handle that gets hot and requires a pot holder. A pot holder, um, a glass measuring cup, dry measuring cups, a spoon for stirring, a rubber spatula, old-fashioned oats, an enlarged copy of the instructions for the stovetop version of the oats, a bowl, a spoon for eating, a salt shaker, and a timer. Um, the frequently asked questions did note that they can use a digital timer rather than a dial timer so we're going to be using a phone to demonstrate um, and then I will ask Vicki I want you to make oatmeal the instructions are on the oatmeal box here's an enlarged version of the instructions if you need them please read the directions to me so that I know that you understand what it is you're about to do follow these instructions and when you're done put the oatmeal in a bowl the items you need are in a box um, so if they don't grab all of the items first you would give them one or two verbal guidance cues depending on how many they need um, if they need more than two you would move on to a gestural guidance um, such as pointing if they need more than two of those you would go to verbal direct instruction which is grab the bowl or something like that and if they need more than two of those you would just take it out for them um, and if they need more assistance than that you're basically doing the task for them um, so then you score on here if they needed verbal guidance, gestural, verbal direct instruction, physical assistance, or having it done for them, or if they were able to do it independently. Mm -hmm. um, and you do that for the initiation of the task, the execution, which consists of the organization, the sequencing, the judgment and safety, and then the completion of the task as well. Um, so, all right. All right, I want you to make oatmeal. The instructions are on the oatmeal box. Here is an enlarged version of the instructions, okay. if you need them. 
um, please read the directions to me so that I know that you understand what it is you're supposed to do. Follow the directions and when you're done, put the oatmeal in a bowl and the items you need are in this box. Boil water or milk and salt, stir in oats, cook about five minutes over medium heat, stir occasionally. And then I'll just make one serving. So I need half a cup of oats, one cup of water or milk, and a dash of salt. So the items you need are in the box. Okay. What do you do next? Mm -hmm. I don't know how to get started. Should you put the pan on the stove? Okay, that's a good plan. First or the water? Um, uh, oh yeah, I gotta boil first. You're right. Okay. I need a cup of water. Wait for it to boil and then I'll stir it in. Okay. Okay, the water's boiling. I'm gonna add the oatmeal and then I'll stir it. Start the timer for two minutes and keep stirring. Pot holder. Still stirring. Time. Okay. Turn it off. Okay, so Vicky was independent in starting that activity on her own. She got all of the materials, um, but she needed verbal cues. She needed two verbal cues um, for organizing and then sequencing. Um, she was safe. She used good judgment, and then she finished the task. She didn't like just keep 
stirring or keep washing dishes or anything. Um, washing dishes is optional, they don't have to, but if the person immediately starts washing the dishes, you just grade it as part of the task. Okay, next up is using the telephone task. Um, so the items required for this are a pencil, a paper, a phone book, um, and a magnifying glass. And once again, the magnifying glass is only if the person needs it. If they don't, if they can see without a magnifying glass, you don't need to make them pull it out. Um, so you're going to give instructions such as, I want you to look up a local grocery store in the phone book, telephone them, and ask them if they deliver groceries. Let me know what you find out. The items you need are in the box. So then you're gonna have them put the phone on speaker so that you can hear them and make sure that they've dialed the correct number and then if you need to cue them, you can do so. Um, so if they don't pull out all the items that they need, first you ask them, do you need anything else? Second, you would point to the box. Third, give them direct cues as to what to pick up or assist them. If they have motor limitations, they can ask you to get items from the box for them. Um, and you wouldn't cue this, or you wouldn't score that um, since it's a request. All right, so here's your phone. All right, I want you to look up a local grocery store in the phone book, telephone them, and ask them if they deliver groceries. Let me know what you find out. The items you need are in the box. Okay. Albertson is by my house. you would have them on speakerphone, but since we're demonstrating, she is not using speakerphone because we're not actually calling them. Hi, my name's Vicki. I was wondering if you guys do uh, grocery deliveries. Thank you. Bye. Okay, for scoring the telephone task, um, you would score the initiation, the organization, sequencing, judgment and safety, and then completion. Um, so Vicki didn't need any help getting the items. Um, she arranged them on her own. She sequenced the steps on her own and she used correct judgment and safety. And then once she was done, she hung up the phone, didn't keep playing with it or pushing buttons. So she scored in the independent on all of those. Um, so we'll move on to the next task. For the taking medication section, um, you're going to want to have all of your items in the bin. Um, the items required for this task are a medicine bottle with instructions with the person's name on it, um, a medicine bottle as a distractor with another person's name on it, a non-prescription over-the-counter bottle as a distractor, um, you want all of these pill bottles to be filled with sugar-free candy. A drinking cup, a magnifying glass, um, they're only required to use the magnifying glass if they need it, and crackers so that there's something for them to eat when they take the pill. Um, if the person has already eaten and they tell you that while you're administering this, they don't need the crackers. Um, so you're going to give them the instructions and then you're going to give verbal prompts as necessary. It's important that you don't let them make an error. Um, so you would give prompts before an error is made. So you have to be watching pretty closely. Um, so it would start by saying, I need you to pretend you have a prescription in the box. Find your prescription and do what the instructions tell you to do. The pills in all of the bottles are safe. They're sugar-free candy. 
So if they don't grab everything out of the box, you would give them your first uh, verbal prompt cue. If they're still missing something, you would give them your second verbal prompt cue. Um, at that point, you would move on. If they need more cues from that, you would gesture. Um, if they've gotten two gestural cues, you would move on to a direct verbal cue saying, like, pick up this item specifically. Um, if they get two gestural or two uh, direct verbal cues in a row, then you would move on to a physical assistance cue, which is you just doing it for them. Um, so after they take the correct drug, you would ask the following questions to rate their judgment and their safety. What time during the day are you supposed to take this medicine? When are you, what are you supposed to take with this medicine? What do you need to be careful of when, they t when you take this medicine? Um, and there's a note that it, it is okay if they chew the pill. Um, and then for your scoring sheet, which is this form, you'll fill out while they do this. Um, if they were independent, if they needed one or two verbal cues, gestural guidance, direct verbal instruction, physical assistance, or if you had to do this whole thing for them. Um, so we'll go ahead and jump in. All right. I need you to pretend that you have a prescription in this box. So find your prescription and do what the instructions tell you to do. The pills in all of the bottles are safe. They're sugar-free candy. Do you need anything else? Another item? So she needed two verbal cues, and after that, I moved on to two gestures. Um, so she would get an X in both of these boxes. Tell me which of those pill bottles is yours. Mm, this one? Mm -hmm. Alright, so Kent, what time of day do you take your pills? At 8 a.m. Okay. And what are you supposed to take with this medicine? Um, food and water. And what do you need to be careful of when you take this medicine? Um, I forgot. So then um, you would have her take the medicine and then um, you would have her eat the cracker as well. And then you would um, score the sequencing of the task and the judgment and safety. Um, so for sequencing, like, do they read the directions? Do they make sure it's their own pill bottle before they open it? Um, do they put unused pills back in the bottle, things like that. And then judgment and safety is if they take the correct number of pills, um, if they pour the water into the cup, things like that. All right, so can you take your pill for me? It has my name on it. Oh yeah, I'm not supposed to drink coffee within 30 minutes of taking this. That's what I forgot. Supposed to take two. Um, sit up there. I should probably eat before. Okay. Okay. So now you would score her for how she performed on all of those. She didn't need any cues for that, so she was independent in all of these. Um, and then the end is termination of the task. So she knows she's finished, moves away from the task. Um, she doesn't keep opening and closing the pill bottle or taking more and more. Okay, so now we're gonna do the paying bills section. Um, if they've never used a checkbook, ask them if they know how checkbooks are used. If they say no, then you would just skip this test entirely because you're uh, judging their 
lack of knowledge, not their lack of processing. Um, so for this test, you need two bills, one from a cable company, one from a phone company, mixed in with five other pieces of mail, such as like a letter from a credit card company, an announcement of a sale in a Ziploc bag. Um, you need checks, a balance sheet with a balance $5 less than the total of the bills. You need a pen and a calculator. Um, one of the bills is past due, the other is due upon receipt, so they have to review both of the bills before they start to pay one. Um, they might need cues with that. So when you start the task, you're going to say, I want you to take what you need to pay the bills out of the bag, find all the bills, open all the bills, pay them, and balance the account. These are fake bills and this is not your account, but I need you to pretend that these are your bills and, that your, and your account as this is part of the assessment. So first, if they don't take out all of the items they need, you're going to give them a cue, um, verbal cues, then gestures, then verbal direct instruction, then physical assistance, all the way up to doing it for them. Um, they get two of each, two verbal, before moving on to two gestural, two uh, verbal direct instruction, and two physical assistance. Um, the use of the calculator is not mandatory, so if they can do that math in their head, go ahead and let them. Um, and then be sure that you know which bill is due immediately so that you can cue them if they start paying the wrong bill. Um, and some people have a strategy of paying each part like paying part of each bill and calling the company to tell them that they're planning to do it this way. Um, don't count that wrong if that's what they start doing um, and if that's if they tell you why. But if you start noticing them doing something like that, then you would cue them unless they tell you why they're doing it. So this one's past due and this one I could pay once I get it. So uh, I should probably pay this one because it's late. Um, so it's fifty-two fifty, and then mm. so you need to write out a check for this amount. Okay, this is my checkbook. Bill, bill, phone company, and then it's five twenty nineteen, and then my bill is fifty two fifty. Um, sign this, and I'm done, right? You need to write out the amount here as well in words. Okay. Okay. And then I think I have to write it here. Five twenty nineteen. It's a check number. Um, and this is for Bell Loan Company. And then fifty two fifty. And and I have sixty six dollars and ten. And cents left. And then is that good? Can you need to seal it? Oh, so that we can mail it. Okay. Okay. And then so we do this, this bill. This one is seventy-one dollars and ten cents, and I have sixty-six dollars ten cents. I think I'll just write the check. 
hopefully okay. I'll have enough. I'm gonna stop you there. Okay. Because we don't have enough to oh. do it. And that's the end of our assessment. Okay, so now we'll be scoring the EFPT and you have the summary sheet and the individual tasks that we completed. Um, so the first is a construct. So you must review all four task sheets and count the totals and the highest in each. So for cooking, um, I missed one for organization, which you can find on this sheet, one, okay. And then the same for telephone, there were zero missed and then two for initiation during medication, and then for bills, um, four were missed for sequencing, four prompts, um, one for judgment and safety, and one for completion, and the total construct score was nine, once you add those up. And then for tasks, um, it's the total task number on the bottom of each sheet, and then you also record the time that it took for each of the activities, okay? And then um, this is where your pretest question information goes. And so for cooking, um, I said I can complete it with help. With telephone, I reported I don't need help. And medication, I don't need help either. Bills, I can't do without um, support. And then from the actual performance, cooking um, was consistent. I needed help telephone and medication didn't need any help and bills I couldn't do by myself and then for the potential awareness problem um, the first question says accurately estimate need for help if a hundred percent match between the pretest and actual performance uh, you check yes so I was consistent in my pretest and actual performance and reported that I needed help in certain areas and they were the same and then I didn't over or underestimate, so those would not apply. The number estimated incorrectly, so I said zero of four. And then if this is greater than one of four, you mark yes, but it was no for me since I had zero out of four. And that's it.